Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. In this video, I want to give you the tools and knowledge to best deploy delay because I see a lot of people using it and getting frustrated by why it's not doing what they want it to do, whether they're working on a trumpet, percussion, vocals, a whole mix, whatever. And I wanna get you good results because you're probably just doing it wrong. I should say that in this video, I'm gonna be using a vocal, but anything I'm showing you can be generalized to whatever it is you're gonna be working on in your delay journey. The other thing as we table set here is delay is a time-based effect. It belongs in the time-based family along with flangers, phasers, reverbs, choruses. It's essentially the persistence of sound after the sound source has been muted or turned off. If anyone's ever asked you to make their stuff, you know, sound like give it an echo, they're probably referring to delay. So I'm going to show you in Logic, you can use whatever digital audio workstation you want, how to make the most of delay. But just to get you acquainted, as I often do with what we're working on, have a listen. You got me breathing underwater Baby, when you're under, I can do anything It's like you gave me superpowers I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing So, the first thing you should do when you're going to use a delay is to make sure you have your entire session set to whatever the global BPM is. So if you're using samples, make sure all the samples are getting along and your DAW is metronomed and synced to whatever the tempo of all those samples are. This is really important because we're gonna to be toggling a switch on our delay that's going to sync the copies to the host tempo. In my case, everything is at 104 BPM. My samples, what I've created for this demo, are all at 104. And I can verify that by hitting the metronome and just soloing the vocal and making sure that it's in sync with 104. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. Cool, we've done that. We're good to go, we're set up for success. First thing you gotta do is make sure that your little kind of housekeeping with BPM and tempo is all locked and loaded. Now, please put your delays on buses and then send stuff to them. There is a case to be made for why and how, whatever, you should use them at an insert level on the track itself. I'm gonna talk about that at the end of this video, but before we get into that, I wanna show you the best way to use delay to get the best results, and that is on a bus, not on the track itself that you want to affect with delay. For a couple of reasons we do this. The main one is CPU efficiency. If you've got 500 tracks and they all have a delay on them because you want everything to have delay, your CPU will just overload and it'll be bad. So what you do then is you get one uh, delay going on an aux or something, and then you send using a bus all the stuff that you want to be affected with the delay to that aux. I'm going to set it up here in Logic. It's very, very simple. Um, I'm going to go down here to bus number one, which is already set, and I'm going to have my echo right there added. That was way too easy. Let me show you how to do it manually. Go over here to add a bus, bus three. Bus three shows up automatically, aux three, and I'll put my delay, stereo delay, done. Next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I know how to send stuff. In this case, I'm sending via this bus with this little potentiometer as I move my hand up and down my trackpad. Now I'm sending the, a lot of signal over to uh, this delay. Now I'm sending you know half, there's a very conservative amount, okay? So if I were to um, just play you this. This is what it sounds like. My mix, I'll talk about this in a moment, has to be all the way up. So nothing's getting sent over. You got me breathing underwater. Let's send a little bit over. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. Everything goes on. Okay, so you understand the basic plumbing of sending stuff. Um, through a bus to an aux that has a delay on it. I'm gonna close this out for now because I wanna talk about another important thing. I'm gonna get rid of this bus, no send. There we go. Turn the bus on and off via this little power button, okay? 
The second thing you must do if you are going to use a delay is make sure that you are 100% wet, okay? This is crucial. So this way you don't send any dry signal back to your mix. You're only sending the wet reverberant or delayed or time-based affected signal back into the mix. So you're not adding, adding loudness. Just trust me on this. Wherever you see the wet, make sure it's all the way up. Um, in the case of the plugin I'll be using for you guys today, uh, it's smart enough to leave this at 100% wet if you're using this on a bus. So for example, if I go no plugin um, and I go and try to find echo, which is a delay from Logic Factory, hit stereo, boom. It's defaulted at 100% wet. If I bring it in at an insert level on my track, this is Mr. Dylan, the singer, and go to Echo. It is 96 dry, 78 wet. So it knows I'm on an insert, I'm not on a bus. If I'm on a bus, I'm gonna be 100% and so should you, always 100%. So let that be known. Now, we talked at the opening of this video about tempo and BPM. This is why it's important because we want to make sure that our delay unit is synced to the tempo, the host tempo, which is 104, so that we have nice, clean repetitions, the note value over here, which we'll talk about in a moment, of that copy. We can either have them go in eighth note values, 16th note values, um, quarter note, or half. We're gonna listen to what all these sound like in a moment, but you're not gonna get those clean, in sync, in time, copies of your signal if you're not synced to your host tempo and your host tempo is a source of truth and correct. You might be saying, Jeff, I don't see the button that syncs it here on this echo. That's because there isn't one for some reason. It's just automatically uh, synced to the host tempo. So what you should be looking for if I open up another delay here is this tempo sync. If I disengage it, we're going to milliseconds. We're kind of flying with a different set of instruments here. So now we have uh, 25, 23.1 milliseconds, we can change it. Nine out of 10 times, you're gonna be hitting this button, sticking to the tempo, it goes and indexes your BPM, and now you are synced to 104, and you can change the note values of your copies, your repeats, your delays, your echoes. So going back to echo over here, I'm gonna start with little half notes and have a listen to the timing structure of half note delay synced, of course, to 104. You got me breathing underwater, underwater, underwater. Baby, when you're under, Baby, when I can do anything. Let's go to quarter notes. You got me breathing got me underwater. underwater. Baby, when Baby, you're when under, you're I can do anything. Do anything. A little faster. It's like you gave like me you super, gave me powers. super powers. powers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my girl, it's racing. Go one more, we'll do eights so you can hear it. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you it's gave, like you me, gave super me super powers. powers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So the note value depends on what your sonic goals are, where you set this guy. Most of the time people are hanging out doing quarter or eighth notes, and they'll have different buses that are corresponding to different note value delays, and they'll just send signal. This will all make more sense when I show you how to do this in a moment depending on where they are in the song. For the chorus, they want an eighth note delay. For the big moments and for the verse, they want something a bit more subtle, whatever. It's, it's totally up to you. But now you know what these notes, uh, what, sorry, what these settings do. The note value, the wet dry, we're sending via a bus. This is all hopefully starting to make sense. The other important feature you should know about this maybe, you know, like you can stop here after you know what this thing does is the feedback. This is going to give you the copy of your delayed signal. And if we leave it all the way at zero, you'll notice that we only get one copy. I'm gonna do a little loop here just so we don't have to listen to the whole thing. So we have an eighth note, let's do half note so this is a bit more obvious. Ding, ding. Right, so I'm keeping my metronome on, I'll turn it off. Ding, ding. 
so we don't get another one after that. Let's raise the feedback to get more copies introduced into the mix because we're feeding back the signal back into the delay unit, getting, you know, it's, it's putting out copies for us. Ding, 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 ding. So now it's decaying with repeats uh, and we can hear them as they kind of like get produced and then kind of fade into the background. Ding, 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 ding. Let's bring it up to 50 and see what that sounds like. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so we get more uh, copies, they're louder and they decay over a longer period of time. If we bring it up to 75, Ding, 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 ding. More copies, they're louder for longer and they take more time to decay. 100% you have to be careful with. This plugin is designed to handle the negative outcomes of a feedback loop, which is to say, if we bring the feedback all the way to 100, we're going to be sending 100% of the signal into itself. It's going to create this infinite sounding kind of soundscape that could be problematic at an amplitude level and get crazy. We don't really have to worry about that because we're in floating point processing here. And like I said, this plugin is built to withstand a really loud feedback loop. But just so you can hear it, here's what it sounds like as I let the vocal play. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you, my girl. My heart's racing. turned off the uh, the delay unit there. So you can see how we would get a, 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 if this guy kept singing, kept rapping or talking, it would feed into itself and get really problematic really quickly. So we're gonna bring it back here to about, let's say 65%. I think that's a good spot for us. So now we know how to send signal to an aux through a bus, how to instantiate the delay, which is right here. We know how to affect the copies and the loudness of them via the feedback knob. We know how to affect the, the, the note values of the repetitions. We know what wet and dry does. We're pretty good to go. So now it's about how do we control the delay in a mix? Because obviously, if I were to play this out now, it sounds okay, but it's kind of messy. You got me breathing underwater, underwater, underwater. Baby, when you're under, Baby, when I can do It's like you gave me superpowers. Like super I'm on top of the world when I call you my world. When I call you my world. So this is not good because we're losing intelligibility of the main vocal, and that's not good. Main vocal is the most important thing in most songs. So um, the first thing I'll do is I'll go to I think quarter notes because I like those a bit more. Anything. And we'll leave it at quarter notes and I will introduce some automation. Now, automation is what professionals who mix use to control the frequency, the loudness of the, so the frequency, the number of copies that come in, the loudness of them, where and when they come in, to just give the listener a little bit of ear candy to make the sound, uh, sorry, to make the song sound professional. So I'm gonna show you how this works here. So you'll see that I have, uh, when I click A, which opens my automation settings, a number of like I have this little pink line here what's going on so if I open up my automation menu here you can see that I have this main and then I have volume pan solo mute I have send number one which is referencing my bus number one which is sending to aux number one so I'm using absolute you can use relative if you want but this is basically me going into the guts of my digital audio workstation and controlling and programming changes to various parameters of the plugins and channel stuff that I have going on in my mix. I'm kind of going inside of my tools to get very fine control over how they behave. So in this case, I'm looking for my send right here, which is what we're sending right to the aux through a bus, which has our delay on it, our echo on it. So I'm going over here, send one aux one, awesome. 
So now when I change this send around, when I bring this all the way to zero, you can see this pink line goes all the way to the bottom. We're not sending anything over. When I go all the way to the top, we're sending a lot plus 60 B worth of um, dry signal into this aux that has the echo on it. So that's a lot, right? So for example, it sounds like this. You got me breathing, you got me breathing underwater. That's a lot. So what I'm gonna do is leave it at zero and I'll now go to some of my tools in my digital audio workstation to draw in some automation so that I get a little bit of excitement with delay. So I'll use my marquee tool. You could use your uh, pencil tool, whatever logic has this marquee tool. It's pretty, pretty handy. And what I'm gonna do is choose to go to the very last word on every sequence of kind of sung vocals here and make that trail off so that when he stops singing, we get those copies, those delays of the vocal. And I'm gonna program it with automation using this marquee tool. So if I click command in logic here, it should show up, there we go. I get this little plus, that means I'm using my, my marquee tool, hit the plus, and let's see if I can get this water. water. So water sounds like it starts here. Water. So I'll bring my scrubber back to this section, go like this, and now, there we go. So I'll see about sending about this much over. So you see, as I bring my scrubber over here, look at the send, it's zero, right? Because the pink line is at zero or, you know, um, infinity, negative infinity. If I drag this over, boom, it's up about halfway, okay? So let's see how this sounds soloed and then in the mix. So here's the work I've done with my automation. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're around, oh, I can do anything. How's the sound in the mix? You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're around, oh, I can do anything. So it sounds pretty good to me. So why don't I do the same over here? I think it's a pretty healthy level, minus 6.3, maybe 7.9 here. Here's the last word over here. And down here, we'll do the last little bit here. I did it wrong again. <laughs> and I'll bring that up. There we go. And let's see how this sounds. In the mix, of course. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So that sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty professional, right? It sounds like something we might hear on the radio in so far as, you know, we have copies of the signal. They're not interfering with the main vocal track. We've automated things pretty simply. I could go in and change uh, this. I could, you know, zoom in and really make my, my fades nice. You don't really have to worry about that, thankfully, with delay because it's going to fade and decay on its own based on the feedback value that you have here. But that's... It's pretty good. We've, we've done the basics of getting great results using delay on a bus. So I should say that if you are the kind of person that doesn't want to do this manual automation, you could employ a technique called ducking. And what ducking is, is you're essentially side chaining one signal against another so that when one signal starts to get loud, another goes down. It's a bit like when you're driving in your car and you've got the music playing, but you also have some kind of GPS navigator thing. And when it's time to make an important turn, the music will duck down. You'll still hear it, but it'll be quiet. And your Siri or whatever will be like, make a left in 200 meters. And then it bounces back up when Siri is done talking. So basically we can do the same thing so that the delay isn't audible until the singer stops singing then the delay comes up so that we don't have the two clashing with one another and we don't have to draw all this automation in so let me show you what this actually looks like i'm going to disable my automation i'll bring my bus level to about halfway up and now it's going to sound like it did when we started this tutorial you got me breathing underwater. so in order to get this ducking effect going all you need is a compressor in your digital audio workstation that has a sidechain input. So I happen to have one and it's here, stock one in Logic. 
And the first thing you should do is go to your sidechain input and make the source your vocal. In this case, it's Mr. Dylan Matthew. Cool. The second thing you should do is make sure that your threshold is low enough. You're probably going to have to bring it down quite a bit in order to get this going. I think those are the two things I'll show you for now. Watch this needle because what this needle represents is when it moves all the way to the left, it is, you know, choking. It's saying no delay, please, because I have an input signal of Mr. Dylan singing, no delay. It's pushing it back. But then when Dylan stops, then the compressor eases up and we get a recovery almost of the delay and the delay comes through and is allowed to kind of be heard. So have a listen, whoops, I'll go back to Platinum Digital and take a look at our new side-chained delayed setup here. You got me breathing underwater Baby, when you're under, I can do anything It's like you gave me superpowers I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing so you heard, you saw, when the vocal was present, we didn't hear delay, and when it stopped, our delay bloomed, it came through, it was allowed to come in. But what you've also probably might notice is that it took a little bit of time for the delay to kick in, and that's because we have our attack and release control set to have the recovery happen a little bit more slowly. So what I'll do is I will bring my release time to a much faster setting, and attack, we don't have to worry about too much. I'll leave this over here at like 50. But when I quicken the release, listen to how much faster that delay comes in and recovers after being suppressed. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. You can make it even quicker. I could bring the, the attack really quick as well. Um, maybe the ratio could come down even more. Let's see if that helps us get a quicker recovery. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So we could use a couple of different tools here to further affect the ballistics and behavior. So for example, instead of RMS, let's use peak detection and max and see if that changes the behavior at all too. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So the detection work that I did with these buttons did affect the ballistics of the recovery and suppression of the delay, not in a way I really like. So maybe I'd bring it back to RMS instead of peak, but you can see how you can work and maneuver around your compressor controls to get a nice kind of musical ducking of the delay when the dry signal is present. It's a way for you to get this automation trick that I showed you without having to do any automation. And some plugins actually have this built in. So one that comes to mind here is the, let's see if I can find it since I'm, I'm still getting my head around these tools from Plugin Alliance. There we go. The delay 250. So if I turn this guy off and turn this guy off, I think we have a ducking amount right here. So let's bring the amount in. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So I haven't really configured this to make sense for me in my mix. I just wanted to show you in a, a hasty way that the ducking feature is available in the Brain, uh, Brainworks BX Delay 2500. And now you know that you can do that. So we've covered how to instantiate this, 
how to you know sync it to your bpm your host tempo wet all the way showing you some automation tricks what i want to show you now is how to affect the signal of the copy in ways that are creative and musical because this is something a lot of professional engineers will do as well i'm going to bring echo back here and i'm going to bring this color all the way to zero so we're just getting a solid copy uh, and i'll bring this to actually i'll bring this back my bad quarter notes me breathing underwater baby when you're under i can do anything so if I solo this, one thing you might notice is that right now the copied signal is just literally a copy. It is a full frequency signal of the dry that's going in and being repeated. Underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. So something I think you should do is consider tailoring the sound of the copied signal so that it's not interfering or causing trouble in any way for your mix. So if you have a very, for example, muddy low end on your lead vocalist, which you want to keep, if you don't EQ the delayed signal in any way, you're going to be adding muddiness because you're adding another copy, another layer, a repeated layer of that muddy signal. Or if the vocalist is very sibilant and you want that sibilance, when you add your copy of the delay in, you're adding sibilance, you're adding harshness because you're kind of repeating and adding layers, right? So one thing you can do is employ an EQ after your delay unit and just kind of tailor and shape the sound of just the copy. So for example, let's just be really simple here. I could decide to uh, employ, let me just turn this off, a very high pass effect. So I, I'm letting the highs pass, right? And scooping out the lows. So here's what that sounds like before and after starting with before underwater baby when you're under i can do anything and here's after tell me breathing underwater baby when you're under i can do anything so those copies are pinched they're not as low and muddy and they just th that might be helpful in case you have other low stuff that you don't want to add other low stuff too so that it sounds kind of soupy and swampy here's what it sounds like in the mix before and after pinch it even more it's like you gave me superpowers I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So now it sounds very pinched and almost radio-like. So that's an example of how to tailor the sound of the copied signal to work, make it work for your mix more. Another thing you can do is bring in some saturation on top to just affect the copied signal. So uh, I have Saturn 2 from Fab Filter, and I have this after my delay here so it's kind of like um downstream right let me turn my eq off so we're hearing the full effect of this old tape crunch me Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. it's like you gave me superpowers i'm on top of the world when i call you my girl my heart's racing that could be desirable or it could be undesirable. It's it's totally up to you. We could do another one here. Let's see what this uh, sparkly BM sounds like. Underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So there's another example of how to further tailor and customize the sound of your copy. One last thing is you'll see a lot of people do this thing where they do polarity summation. So they'll flip the phase on their delay unit or they'll add something to flip the phase on their delayed bus. This can sometimes enable the effect of a nice wide sounding um, delay, which is cool. There's 
Another way to get there a little faster with the stereo spread tool in Logic that I like. So I'll turn this on and um, I'm gonna bring these guys down a little bit just because this effect can be pretty um, kind of volume or gain enhancing. So have a listen to this guy. Let me turn Saturn off as well. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So here's before. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. And here's after. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So I know that we're just hanging out with a vocal here, but imagine applying this to anything you want to give it that kind of enhancement and that stretch and that panorama from stereo spreading it. So I promised at the beginning of the video, we talk about why and how one would use a delay at an insert level. There is, I think, a couple of strong use cases uh, to use it. I just think that most people do it and they expect to get what they're what, what I'm showing you here on a bus and they don't get it and they don't know why. Here's one way that I would use delay on an insert level. And I would use it primarily as, I'm gonna shut this bus off here, a thickening agent or, and or, a sitting in the mix better agent. Delay when used appropriately at an insert level can help the vocal fit and just kind of nestle in by smoothing it out, by adding almost a chorusing effect to um, a dry source. So I'm gonna turn the automation off. Let's make sure that I'm back to a bone dry vocal. You got me breathing underwater. So what I'll do is bring in my stereo delay and I will make sure that I'm tempo synced like this. And let's go for a 16th note on the left and a 16th note on the right. And what I'll do now is make sure that my stereo link is engaged. We're using a stereo delay this time and bring these both down and I'll bring this in to taste until I get that smoothing agent that I talked about earlier, until I get that kind of widening, smoothing, sitting in the mix thing. Let's have a listen. As the mix plays, I'll just loop it so I can get a nice sound going. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So that might not sound like much. But listen to how things just sit a little better. They're a bit more smoothed out with that change. Before. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. After. You got me breathing underwater Baby, when you're under, I can do anything It's like you gave me superpowers I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing So I see this a lot in pop music, especially um, Billie Eilish. Uh, you get the session if you're a Logic user for uh, Ocean Eyes. And you can see, which I'm, I'm pretty sure this, that session is very faithful to the one that Phineas mixed. You can see he's got the busing that we showed uh, at the beginning of the video, but he's also got at an insert level, I think this very delay, the stereo delay with a tasteful amount of, um, you know, of wet coming in just to give Billy that kind of ethereal sit in the mix, spacey quality and, and thickening, widening quality that a insert level delay provides. The thing I was talking about, people using it wrong or not wrong, but just, you know, people doing stupid stuff with it is they'll bring it in and kind of bring this left and right and be like, why doesn't it sound good? 
You should be bussing it and be automating it, but if it's on an insert, I think down here, you're in a really good kind of space to add some polish and, and kind of pro width to your stuff. You got me breathing underwater. Baby, when you're under, I can do anything. It's like you gave me superpowers. I'm on top of the world when I call you my girl, my heart's racing. So, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you stuck through the entire thing. If you did, I appreciate it. Um, if you want to support me, I got a Patreon link. I'd love it if you became a member. I've had some new members, which is heartwarming. I also have an affiliate link. If you want to buy something, I get a kickback and we can keep this channel nice and independent. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. Any questions, suggestions, further stuff, stuff that wasn't clear this time around, please let me know in the comments. I read them all and I will see you in the next one.